Imagine using AI automation to process live audio from Zoom or Google Meets to power your next startup just with no code tools. You could analyze sales calls, gather the tone of the call, key insights, or you could build an AI project manager that listens to your calls, creates to do's and assigns them automatically. I'm using Google Docs just to demo the real time transcription. But in this video, I'll show you how to use recall.ai, N8N and Superbase to automatically log into your meetings, transcribe the data live into Superbase and perform real time analysis. If you're tired of AI guru pushing lame templates without purpose, this video is for you. All right, let me quickly show you how all of this works and then I'll step through the entire automation step-by-step step so that you can build this yourself. I'm gonna jump over to Google Meet. I'm gonna create a new meeting. You can pretend that you're on a sales call and you wanna analyze that sales call live or a team meeting and you wanna analyze it live. All we really need is the audio. So now I'm gonna grab this meeting ID. I'll jump back to N8N. And from here, I'm gonna drop that meeting ID here. And what that's gonna do is in recall.ai, it's gonna launch the bot into this new meeting. So you can see that right here. And what you're gonna notice is that we have a new bot that jumps into this meeting so that it can start the live transcription. All right, here it is. We'll go ahead and admit it. And the first thing that's gonna happen here is I'm gonna jump back to N8N and we're gonna be using this automation here. It's already running. So this is an active automation. If I run over to the executions here, we're gonna to start to see the bot sending us the transcription as it happens. You see all these coming through. Now I am using the self-hosted version of N8N because otherwise it would be using a lot of your workflows. And so I'm also writing this live transcription to a document and I'll explain a little bit more about why I'm doing that. But you can already see here that everything that I'm saying is showing up live as we talk. And so I'm just going to leave this meeting running while I do this video. And so we can see what's happening. And so not only are we getting the live transcription, but I have this other automation here, which will do a five minute summary, which will pull the tone and the insight of this conversation and also a quick summary. So if we're doing a sales call, we could get the tone of the call, the key insight, and then also a summary of what's happening. And then it's also going to give us a full outline of the entire conversation, not just the five minutes. So I need to grab this ID here just so we limit it to this conversation. I'm going to drop it into this here and then I'm going to go ahead and execute this workflow. And so we're basically analyzing the conversation for the last five minutes. So if I come back to the five minute summary, we're going to see that the tone is informative and focused. So that's this video. Literally, as I speak, the tone of this video is informative and focused. The key insight is highly practical applications for meetings. And the summary is Stephen G. Pope is demonstrating a live transcription system integrated with automation, yada, yada, yada. And then if we go to the full summary, we're going to see this as the entire summary. And I'll show you the prompts that I'm using to analyze and come up with these insights. And obviously you can change these to your specific use case. And of course, in a real production environment, this specific automation would continue to run at some interval. And then this would continue to update, not necessarily in a Google Doc, although you could, but you can see here that the key insight has shifted from where it was before. And the full summary is going to continue to get built out as we go. So by the time we end this video, we'll have a complete outline of the video because I'm just going to leave this running as as I show you everything. All right, so now to get this set up, before we jump into N8N and I show you all of the different modules here, you will need a recall.ai account. And there is a free account, you can get $5 free and you can do everything that I'm doing here on that free account. And you don't really even need to set much up here. The only thing that I have set up is I've connected up a transcription service. In this case, I'm using Assembly AI. And this is actually the API that's doing the transcription, giving us that live transcription. So that's integrated with recall.ai. Recall.ai is the one that's actually logging in to Google Meets here. So all I had to do was create an account, go to transcription, come to the assembly AI, add in my API key. Obviously I had to create a assembly AI account as well, and it gives you some free credits as well. So this whole thing can be tested for free. So once you have your API key here, then we can come back to N8N and walk through these different automations and how they work. Now, if these automations are a bit over your head, make sure to jump into the No Code Architects community. There is a full course on N8N to get you started. And you'll also find these templates where you can download them and import them directly into N8N with everything already built out. So you already saw this, but everything starts in this chat module where we can drop in the meeting ID. In production, you'd probably do it slightly differently, but this is just a proof of concept to show how all of this works. And then the next thing we do is we have an HTTP request module. We're making an HTTP request with a post to this specific URL, and we're sending headers with our authorization key, our token, and you're gonna 
put your API key here. And then we have another header here, accept application JSON. Then we're sending a body, body type JSON. And then if we expand this, we're simply sending the media URL and some other metadata. Feel free to pause the video and screen capture this and just use ChatGPT to help you build out this JSON. Then you should be able to cut and paste that right into this section here. I'll remove the current bot from the call just so I can show you how this works again. We'll drop that in there. We'll run this, then we'll run this next module here. And then this isn't really actually being used. All this does is get the status of the bot we just created. So if I test this step here, it's nothing more than just getting the status. And so you can see all of the status data here. And again, we're gonna see the new bot come into the meeting again, and we'll go ahead and admit that bot. And then if we were to come back to the summary, again, the transcription is going to go ahead and continue from here. And then we've got our actual outline continuing to grow. So now let's step through everything that's happening here. So when we set up this bot, you can see here, one of the things that we do is that we add a real time endpoint here and it, we add a webhook and we're giving it the webhook of this node right here. So we start up the bot and we say, hey, use this webhook to send us the live data. And so that's all that's happening here is that we're getting the live data here. And if we look at the executions, we can continue to see these coming through here. In this next module here, all we're doing is checking the contents of the data that is being sent to us. And we are seeing if the transcript is the final data or the partial data. And so to explain what I mean there is that assembly AI is pretty cool in that as it transcribes, it will start to give you data very quickly. But some of that data is considered partial data. And all that means is that it's not finalized. It wants to give you information as quickly as it can so that you can use it. But some of that data is an approximation. It may not be 100% complete, okay? So once it has finally analyzed everything and it has decided that these are the specific words that you have said, then it will send a final transcription data. So all we're doing here is only sending the final data, not the partial data. And there are some other use cases why you might want to use the partial data. But in this case, I just really wanted the final piece. Now, in this next module here, what I'm doing is I'm taking all the data and I'll open this up if you want to do a screenshot. But what this is doing is it's taking all of the words, because if we look at a request here, it gives you every word individually. So we have getting some streams in this is a previous stream that I was monitoring, but it gives you all of that data word by word. So what this does here is it combines all of those individual words into a simple sentence. So you can see here we have a sentence that says getting some streams in instead of having it word by word. And then in this next node here, we are getting the bot data. We're making an HTTP call and it's just giving us some extra information that we need to store along with the sentence that we just created in this previous module. Now, the next thing that I'm doing is I'm saving all of this data, all of these sentences into Superbase. So if I jump back to Superbase here, I've got two tables. I've got transcribed sentences and meeting summary. We'll cover meeting summaries in just a second. I'm storing all of these sentences in Superbase because in production, I would rather have it here where I can analyze it. I'm just using these documents as a way to debug it and just see it live because it's not as easy to see in a database like this. But these automations here are using the Superbase data to create the five minute summary and to create the full summary that we see right here. So again, if I were to run this, it's pulling the data from here and it's using these timestamps to either pull the last five minutes or to pull all of the rows for a specific meeting ID. So if we scroll over a bit, we can see that we have the meeting ID here and that allows us to filter the conversation and create either the five minute summary or the full summary just for that specific meeting ID. And that's why in the beginning of this video, I updated this here just so that we're only looking at this meeting ID. So we get the bot data and then we add that sentence to Superbase. So if we open this up, all we're doing is we're connecting N8N to our live transcript Superbase database. And then we're just creating a row in a specific table. And I'll show you the structure of that table. Here you can see all of the columns for both tables if you want to copy this and create them on your own. I'll also have those templates here inside the NoCode Architects classroom. And then I simply take the data from the previous nodes here and map them into Superbase directly. So we've got the sentence. Remember that came from the code. We've got the start time. That's coming from the code as well. The end time, that's coming from the code. The participant ID, that's coming from the code. And again, remember the code is just taking all of the data from the webhook and compiling it for us to use it easily. Participant's name from the code. Participant is host coming from the code. Participant extra data coming from the code. Most of it's coming from the code. Transcription ID, recording ID, 
endpoint ID. Now the meeting ID is actually coming from the git bot data, which is that previous module that we had here. For whatever reason, it didn't come through in the webhook, so we needed to look that up. Participant platform, which is in this case, Google Meets. It could easily work on Zoom. We've got the bot ID. It's coming from the code. The webhook URL is coming from the code and the event type is coming from the webhook and the event type is simply whether it's partial or final data here. Over time, we're just collecting the entire conversation sentence by sentence in the database so that we can process it now, real time or anytime later as well. So instead of going through all the trouble of getting the transcript after the meeting is recorded and trying to process it. Not only do we have that live, but we can also process it live, just like we're doing here in these documents. In production, you're probably not gonna use documents, although you could, I could see you using a document and monitoring a meeting this way, but I imagine that you'll create some sort of app that will take this data and present it however you want. So that covers how to generate the bot and also how to receive all of the real-time data. So now this next automation, that I am triggering manually whenever I want would typically run at some interval while this meeting was live so that you could get the five minute summary at whatever interval you wanted. So right now, the five minute summary is being calculated whenever I click that. But during an actual call, you might want this being summarized quite quickly, right? Because if you want to see if the tone is changing or if you want to see if there's a key insight, maybe you're on a sales call and you want to be able to handle an objection, you're going to want that key insight right away. So this might be running quite often and you might not even need the summary. So this is just a, a single use case just to show you the power. But we have our manual trigger in edit in. And then we have this just to set the meeting ID for this particular run of the automation. And now in this module here for the five minute summary, all we're doing here is retrieving all of the rows, all of the sentences for the last five minutes. Actually, I need to adjust this. I was testing something earlier. And then it's also limiting it to this specific meeting ID. So it's just pulling back all the rows for the last five minutes for this given conversation. And then we have some code here. I'll open this up so that you can copy and paste it. What this is doing is it's simply concatenating all of the sentences together by user. So right now I'm the only person in here. So it's saying Stephen G. Pope says, and it's just one continual long conversation. But if there was another person in here, it would break these sections up into who is speaking. Every time the speaker changed, we would see Stephen G. Pope says, yada, yada, yada. John Doe says this, this, and this. And then Stephen responds back and forth like that. That's all this code does is it just concatenates those sentences with the username. And then it runs it into OpenAI and our prompt here. So I'll open this up and I'm just using 4.io mini to keep the cost down. But we have this prompt here. I'll open it up so you can copy and paste it. Pretty straightforward. It's just you're a meeting intelligence assistant. Your job is to analyze the last five minutes of a real time recording. We want a brief summary. We want the key insight and we want the overall tone of the conversation. And then I also tell it to give more importance to the most recent lines of the transcript. You can imagine over five minutes that the topic could change, but I ask it to use the final parts of that section if there's multiple conversations going on. And then again, I ask it to return a JSON. And then we've got the user prompt here, pretty straightforward as well. Here we're saying, hey, here's the transcript of the last five minutes. We pipe in the conversation that was created in the code from the module before. And then we say, go ahead and please analyze this text. And then we give it a sample of the actual JSON that we want outputted. And then all we do here is we simply write that summary into the database. So I am writing that to the document just for real time analysis but I'm also saving all of these meeting summaries into the database as well. And so if we want to take a quick look at the format of that table, you can see that here. Again, if you want these Superbase templates, they're going to be in the classroom. Otherwise, you can copy them straight from here and build that out in Superbase. By the way, inside the classroom, I will also explain how to actually set these up in Superbase if you are new to it. So we'll go ahead and take a look inside this node here. It's simply connecting with our database. It's creating a row, except this time into meeting summaries. And we're just filling in the data here. We got the meeting ID that's coming from the field that we manually edit. Then we've got the summary type, which is the five minute summary, the actual summary, the tone and the key insight, mostly coming from the prompt in OpenAI. And then we have the document here where I'm outputting the key insight at the top of the document. I think I might have forgotten that here as well. Here I am simply writing the specific sentence to the end of the document. So if I come to the meeting debug here, it's continuing to write that as we go. And so here's what that looks like. And then if we look at this one here, inserting this into a document and we're mapping the summary, the key insight and the tone directly into the document. And realistically, the full summary and outline works pretty much the same way, except we are getting all of the sentences for the meeting ID. We're not just looking for the sentences that happened in the last five minutes. So we'll get all of those rows. 
this code here is the same as this one here. You can take a screenshot of that and use ChatGPT to help you pull that out if you'd like. And then we've got our OpenAI prompt. This one's just a bit different. In this case, we are not trying to get the tone necessarily. We're just trying to get a full summary of that meeting here. So we have that here. Parse the transcript and group the conversation into distinct topics. For each topic, write a topic label. Underneath, list two to four short factual bullet points and format the summary as plain text string and then return it as a JSON as a summary. And then we have our user prompt here where we actually give it the transcript and all of the sentences and then the formatted JSON and how we want it to come out. And then we can test that. And there's our summary. And then in this next module here, it's just like the one here where we add that summary into our meeting summaries except the only difference this time is the summary type is full summary and we don't really have the tone, although we could create the tone as well, the overall tone of the conversation. So we'll test this step and then we'll go ahead and test this one here. And this is gonna show us again, our live transcript from this entire video as I've spoken through it. So we have the live transcription overview, the integration and setup requirements, and it end workflow and data processing, summary generation and output, use case and customization, data architecture and tables, additional notes, pretty cool. So now my original use case for this is that I'm gonna create an AI project manager. And I wanted that project manager to be able to come into my meetings with my team and document things as we talk about them, create to-dos, assign them, and help hold people accountable. This is the first piece. And then throughout the week, it will be able to check in with those people. But I could see people using this for sales calls, and helping their sales team analyze things live. There's all sorts of use cases for this. Imagine if you are on a call and in a non-disruptive way, you could see the tone of your prospect on the call. It could give you a key insight on where you should be digging a little bit deeper or how to handle an objection. And you may or may not want the summary. It might be kind of hard to read that while you're on a call. And then of course, this is nice even while you're on the call just to see exactly where the meeting is, what's been described, what's been talked about, and where to go from there. And again, if we look inside of this here, it doesn't do much except just update the document. We've got the document ID. It's adding a page break just to add some space. And then it's just simply inserting that summary at the top of the document. So now if you want a deeper dive on N8N and get access to these templates, make sure to jump into the No Code Architects community. It's an engaged group. We promise to solve 100% of all of our members' tech issues. We've also got support calls almost every single day, sometimes two. I'd love to see you inside the community. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.